There are places on this planet that shock you with extremes. Extremes of climate, of culture, of physical proportion. Alaska is one of these places. Upon my arrival in the city of Fairbanks, I found myself confused. It was late, very late, nearly midnight, in fact. But the sun wasn't setting. Instead, it was circling, acting as some kind of flaming orange bird of prey, just waiting for the right time to swoop down and consume me. And this alarming but beautiful thought acted as my first insight into the strange and wild nature of this strange and wild place. Arriving in a land where the clock reads 11 p.m. and the sky reads afternoon snack can really throw your mind through a loop. Having never spent time north of Montana, this experience was certainly a new one for me. But seeing life within, or at least near, the Arctic Circle has always been a deep fascination of mine. I've never been able to figure out why exactly. Maybe it's the never-ending sunshine, daylight, burning itself into the earth for months on end. Or perhaps it's this pervasive feeling of vastness. The sense that this is a place far too large and intricate for the likes of a simple human. Why my interest is piqued by life in the extreme northern regions of our pale blue dot, I may never fully understand. But the important thing is that I'm here. Welcome to the interior. That's what this part of Alaska is called. It's an oddly ominous name for a place so stunningly, freakishly beautiful. The interior is the largest of Alaska's six commonly recognized areas. Laying in the center is the city of Fairbanks, a quiet, vaguely industrial, but overall homely town. A two hours drive south takes you to one of Alaska's most legendary sites, Denali National Park. And while there are other towns, and certainly plenty to see, the interior is mostly empty. In fact, that's the first thing that strikes you about this place. As you drive, you quickly notice that the country roads, the ranches, the small communities you see in most of rural America don't seem to exist here. Instead, there are forests, mountains, and rivers, either mostly or wholly untouched by human hands. Besides a few power lines and quiet highways, this place feels ancient beyond time. It is in this reality that a name like The Interior really starts to make sense. There's a pervasive sense of coldness here, and I don't mean the temperature. Alaska has existed this way for millions of years. Alaska does not care about you, your car, your house, or just about anything else. Straying from the road may be the last thing you do, and if it is, Alaska will continue to be unchanged and unrepentant. This is The Interior venture forth at your own risk. But for those who do choose to venture here, there are sights, sounds, and flavors unlike anywhere else on Earth just waiting for you to discover them. While there are plenty of perfectly nice cities and communities like Fairbanks and Healy, I'll be honest, I wouldn't describe Central Alaska as a cultural haven of humanity. Don't get me wrong, the people here are wonderful in a rough and ready kind of way. But the wonders of native Inuit culture are better found on the northern slope of Alaska, a place I hope to explore further in the future. But if you're in the interior, there's a good chance you're here for one very important reason, and that reason would be Denali National Park. Originally conceived by conservationist Charles Sheldon in 1906, this enormous expanse of rugged peaks, deep valleys, and epic foliage covers a staggering 4.7 million acres, making it the third largest national park in existence. I mean, just look at this. I grew up in Colorado, land of the Rockies. I thought we had mountains. Turns out, I was completely wrong. Denali makes Colorado look like Tennessee. In saying that, I mean no offense to my friends in the volunteer state. I simply mean that if the Rockies are tall, Alaskan mountains are gargantuan. Denali houses some of the highest and most extreme terrain in North America with temperatures on its namesake peak often hitting 100 degrees below. 
But regardless of this, one of my favorite things about this park is that if you can get yourself to the entrance, it's actually quite accessible. The surrounding area sits at a palatable elevation of around 1,300 feet, so those of us who don't agree with being at elevation should be fine. There are scores of bus tours, hiking groups, fishing expeditions, and guided experiences for travelers of any shape, size, or age. You can make this place as intense or as relaxed as you would like. Fancy base jumping off a 3,000-foot cliff? Then Ollie's got you covered. But if snapping pics of wildflowers from an air-conditioned tour bus is more your speed, that's certainly to be had here as well. Regardless of what you do with your time in the park, you will undoubtedly walk away with a feeling that can only be described as true astonishment. There are few places on this planet that are as starkly epic as Denali. Here, there be giants. Titans erupting from the ground, retching upwards as if trying to impale the very heavens with their craggy spears. But violent as this may seem, Denali is at its heart a sanctuary a home to flora and fauna that have flourished in its many valleys and forests for millennia. It is the perfect embodiment of the Alaskan interior. Vast, ancient, a bit frightening, but ultimately beautiful and deeply rewarding. Every great excursion requires a great deal of fuel, specifically food. And while it may not be a top-tier destination for food bloggers and critics, I found the Alaskan interior to be full of delicious surprises. You can get most anything here that you can get anywhere else. Of course, burgers, pasta, pizza, these staples are in abundant supply. They even have some ethnic favorites, like this delightful roadside food truck in the tiny community of Healy, about 10 miles up the north from Denali. But while this pad thai was genuinely one of the best examples of the dish that I've ever had, there is one culinary genre that cannot and should not be ignored here. And that is, of course, the seafood. If you've had your fun at Denali and are heading back north, get yourself to Fairbanks and find this place, the Pump House. Renowned by locals and visitors alike, this place is second to none when it comes to the many edible treasures of Alaska's coasts and rivers. Nestle yourself into a chintz armchair and stare around at the funky 1940s country club decor. Then, order yourself any of a plethora of seafood classics. Oysters on the half shell, clams simmered in Cajun broth, pounds of glittering king crab legs, fish and chips, salmon filet with birch syrup. The list goes on and on. Suffice to say, if you like eating things that live underwater, you'll be in heaven here. And if you find yourself here in the summer, you can dine al fresco on the banks of the Chena River for an authentically Alaskan eating experience fit for an Eisenhower-era dignitary. At the beginning of this film, I mentioned that in the summer, the sun does not set here. And that's true, it doesn't really fully set for three months out of the year. Being from a normal, non-Arctic circle place, this was perhaps the most unusual and challenging thing about being here. And to make things even more extreme, I happened to land in Fairbanks a scant three hours before the summer solstice, when the midnight sun is at its most evident. When you're in a place where this otherwise minor celestial occurrence means that you're smack dab in the middle of three months of non-stop sunshine, the summer solstice takes on an entirely new meeting. And it also granted me a glimpse into a very different side of Alaska. You get the sense that for much of the year, people here keep to themselves, not out of spite for others, but mainly out of necessity. It's hard to have much contact with others in a place this big and isolated. But the solstice is different. On this day, the residents of the interior take this night of endless light as an opportunity to let loose and party. Our flight into Fairbanks landed at roughly 10 p.m., which looked to my eyes like 4.30 on an average afternoon. Within an hour, we were at the Botel, a quaint riverside bar with an outdoor stage, and it would seem that most of the town had turned out to dance, sing, and drink the night away in an impressive display of revelry. Meanwhile, two hours south in Healy, that tiny community had torn itself asunder, transforming from a quiet hillside town into something that looked like a late-night rave on the shores of Ibiza. 
Many drinks were had, many pounding techno tracks were played, and the normally quaint people of Denali Borough allowed themselves to become as untamed as the titanic walls of stone and wood that surrounded them. While you may not guess it any other time of the year, these people know how to party. There's no two ways about it. The Alaskan interior is a strange place. At first glance, the massive expanse of endless wilderness can be intimidating. The sense of being in a place that can either dazzle you or kill you isn't an inherently pleasant feeling at first. But after spending time driving the highways, hiking the trails, and getting to know the locals, I began to understand how things work here. You respect the land and appreciate it for allowing you to walk on it. You keep your wits about you alongside a healthy amount of curiosity and boundless appreciation for the sheer epicness that faces you on all sides. And more than anything, you learn to accept things as they are. Sometimes the sun doesn't set for three months. So what? Life goes on. Sometimes there's a moose cow and her two calves casually grazing on the side of the road. The cow weighs the better part of a Toyota Tundra and can kill you in an instant. So what? She's just doing her thing. Regardless of it all, these things are just a part of life in this part of the world. This place will continue to exist as it always has. Venture here at your own risk. But for those who choose to take this chance, they may just find themselves lost in a vast expanse of things ancient, unexplored, serene, fun, delicious, and most of all, truly astonishing. ¶¶ 